I love this slide. You can almost feel the, the heat from that sun, right? Well, that's the power of the sun. And um, we can utilize that in several ways. One is passive solar. And the passive systems are one in which you bring sunlight and the heat that it brings into a building. You capture that heat in uh, thermal mass. In the thermal mass, if it's material such as uh, concrete, tile, and so forth, it'll retain that heat and start giving it off six hours later. Time lag. So six hours later, you can start recapturing that heat. An active system is where you add some fans to it. And that's where we take and say, OK, now we've got this heat that's coming into the building. Let's distribute it through the rest of the building. So you put in some ceiling fans or maybe some transfer fans. That, that's an active system. Or a combination of both is to bring in that sunlight in, allow it to heat up the materials, use the fans. And so that's space heating. You can also allow for um, natural ventilation by thermal currents that rise, heat rises. And so you open up a, a high window and a low window, and the heat will come in. And, and in the summer, you can cool the building. Now, the heat load on a residential building, there's few occupants. There's very little in the way of machinery. You want the sunlight to come in and heat the building. It's called a skin-dominated building. On a commercial building, office building, you have lots of people. You have uh, lots of equipment. And so there, you're not looking to add heat. You're looking to shelter that or shade that heat from coming into the building. So there we have a low-dominated building. The load is on the inside, and we're looking to mechanically ventilate, mechanically cool, and possibly do some shading. And we saw some of the other slides where they had a PV um, sunshade. Orientation of the building on the site. When we talk about the program, we go really way back to the beginning, first sitting down with the client. He rolls out the site plan. And you look at the site plan. You know whether you can do the, the proper, better design orientation or not. Because if it's a long, slender site, and you can only fit the building in one direction, you're going to have some thermal problems. Because the sun setting on the west side, you have really very little control over it unless you have no windows. On the south side, because the sun is high in the summer, lower in the winter, with projections, you can shade that sun. And that is the better orientation. So going way back to the orig original programming analysis, and you're sitting down with a client, you're looking at his site plan. You're looking at the, the site, whether you can accomplish this orientation. Here's a graphic of, of what we're talking about. The south wall is where the sun will come in on, in the wintertime. If it's also the view, that means you can have your windows on the south side, allowing the sunlight to come in, but it also offers you the opportunity of the view. The north wall is where you want the least amount of windows. You want that as a buffer zone, because you have wind that comes from the north. Uh, the object is to have your north wall as solid as could be. It represents the least amount of heat loss in the wintertime. This is what that represents as a plan. The north side, buffer spaces, stairs, closets, garages, anything that is not a living space. Living space on the south side. You have the direct gain from the summer, uh, from the winter sun. You can sh uh, shade out the, the, the summer sun. And what I tell my clients is that if you're, if you're facing south and the street side is to your back and there's also a view, you really have what I think is, is the proper bullseye um, configuration of a site. 
So when you're looking for property, put your back to the street, face south. If there's a view and you, all of those things fit, you've got a good site for um, a building. Let's just take a look at, at uh, if we look at our building and we have, let's say, street side. And we have an overhang and an overhang and an overhang. We can have the winter sun coming through, heating up some spaces. And because of the overhang, we can block off the summer sun. So that's the kind of relationship that we should be looking for. Sloped site, street at our back, and this is south. And preferably, if that's the view, you have a home run. The way that works, the, um, the shade that's produced by the overhang keeps the summer sun out. So if you have the relationship of the projection P and the height of the window, H, if you have that equal 100%, which is at that end of the screen, you can save 4% at minimum off your air conditioning load. So just by merely adding a projection, you're saving 4% every single summer season. Now, what does it cost to put the projection on? It's going to cost you something. But if you look at it in the total analysis, if you're going to stay in that building 10 years, 20 years, if it's a rental situation and it's going to go on for 75 years, that projection is making money for you. Putting it all together, you have south view with a, uh, w uh, windows that open up to the winter sun. You have some trees on the east and on the west that protect the building from the very low sun angle. Because when it's very low, a projection is not going to help. Some of the things that we look at are the um, um, low solar heat gain glass on the east and west side. We'll look at reflective materials or light colored materials on a roof to reflect the heat as opposed to dark color which absorb that heat. Here's what we were just talking about, the angle of the sun. In the summertime, when that tree is full of leaves, it helps protect the building, both in the roof area and also in the window area. When the sun is lower in the winter time, there's no leaves on the trees, and so it allows the winter sun to come in. One of the things that, that we do as a window, a roof overhang, as a ceiling. This dimension is calculated so that we have a break even or break off point for that sun that's coming down summertime. We have this calculated so that the winter sun comes through That's the relationship that we want to maintain for a proper projection and uh, look at the uh, possibility also of um, a deck. And then we have maybe a, a lower story with a uh, walkout basement maybe and we're allowing the winter sun to come in. So we have in the winter, we'll let the sunshine come in. And then at night, we've left those windows open. And what's happening? The heat is going out. Because heat will travel from 
one space to a darker surface. So we have at nighttime the window and we've not closed the curtains. So it represents a very dark surface. So the heat in the room is actually going out the window with the window closed. So at night, draw the curtains, keep the heat in. Or in the case of a north facing window or slider, a quilted type of shade, and that when I say quilted type of shade, they have channels on the sides and the shade comes down within the track. It's almost like an overhead door. So it seals itself. So besides being quilted, which is insulation, there are tracks mounted to the inside jam of the window or the door so that when the shade comes down, you're really sealing that up. If you can reduce the energy consumption in a building, down, you can almost reach a point where it's consuming no energy. Net zero energy buildings. On an annual basis, if they consume no outside energy source from the grid, from other sources, you have a net zero situation. There's a couple of buildings that, that actually capture the sun, sun's energy. They produce uh, electric through uh, solar panels, and they will be a net zero building. The upper right hand corner is a building that my office designed. It allows for solar PV as well as solar thermal and it, you can see because of the large overhangs uh, that it shades the summer sun but allows the winter sun to come in. There's also a Prius in the driveway. Very important. We need to do some energy conservation in this country, big time, because we are mortgaging the future of our children's uh, livelihood, our grandchildren's livelihood. And I'm not talking about recycled materials. I'm not talking about you know, different paint or different carpeting and things of that nature. I'm talking about energy conservation, first step, most important. This is a, uh, a typical arrangement of how natural ventilation, uh, by opening high windows, opening low windows, you get the rising hot air will go out, cooler air comes in, uh, summer sun is blocked, the winter sun comes through. Um, interestingly, if you're in the southern hemisphere, everything is reversed. You want the building facing north because now the sun is on the other side of, of your building. So in the southern hemisphere, we're looking at a reverse situation. 